Hello and welcome to Europolitics Chat, the new debate format on Europolitics.info. Today we're in the European Parliament in Brussels, thanks to Parliament's Audiovisual Services Department. But today is not a normal day here. The corridors are filled not only with elected members and their staff, civil servants, lobbyists, journalists and visitor groups, but also with entrepreneurs, CEOs and business representatives from all over Europe. From 619 companies, in fact, hailing from 29 countries. Because today, this house is playing host to the third European Parliament of Enterprises. It's a biannual event organized by Eurochambres, the Association of European Chambers of Commerce and Industry. Before we delve into the ambitions and aspirations of the European Parliament of Enterprises, let me introduce my guests today. From Austria, I welcome Dr. Christoph Leitl, an entrepreneur and politician. He is currently president of the Austrian Federal Economic Chamber, honorary president of Eurochambres, and chairman of the Global Chamber Platform, GCP. Dr. Leitl had this morning presented a new global business survey by the GCP, and we are going to hear about that in a minute. From Russia, Vice President of the Chamber of Commerce and Industry of the Russian Federation and member of the General Council of the International Chamber of Commerce, Georgi Petrov. We will talk to him about internationalization and SMEs crossing borders, one of our four topics of this year's Parliaments of Enterprises. From Poland, I welcome Magorzata Novak Niedziewicka, Vice Chair of the Board of Poldent Dental Care, a medium-sized business that has successfully crossed national borders within Europe. I'd like to ask her what she, as leader of a medium-sized business, is expecting from this event here today. But first, let's turn to Dr. Leitl. You have uh, just presented to the press the brand new survey taken among members of the Global Chamber platform about the outlook of worldwide growth in 2015. The result isn't that encouraging, is it? It is. Um, the forecast is less optimistic than we wanted to have. But there are differences. Uh, for example, uh, United States are more optimistic, Gulf region is more optimistic, China is more optimistic, mm -hmm. but Russia is less optimistic, um, uh, European Union is less optimistic and we have to ask ourselves why, what are the reasons and what can we do to better this situation. So one of the uh, uh, attempts, I guess, to better the situation is this Parliament of Enterprises, I, I it suppose. Is. Perhaps tell us a little bit about uh, what <clears throat> you uh, intend to achieve with this Parliament of Enterprises. Normally, uh, economy and the companies are the basis, and uh, politics uh, is uh, putting up the taxes of the companies and spending it. Mm. Now, the uh, companies itself are part of the politics and are saying what they need to fulfill the expectations. Uh, to employ people, to educate people, to pay taxes. They need frame condition, less bureaucracy, more innovation, more science, um, more internationalization, uh, and uh, more access to finance, especially for small and medium sized companies. For startups, it's very, very difficult to, they, to get money to realize uh, your plans, and that we have to change. Yeah, yeah. And uh, do you think the politicians are listening? Sure, they are listening because they are looking for results. Yeah. They, they know normally the problem, but not the answers, and we are telling them the answers. The first topic uh, of um, uh, this Parliament of Enterprises was internationalization, and uh, focused, of course, also on the single market in Europe. Um, the vote was uh, a negative one. They said the European Union has not enough developed the single market. You voted uh, in that vote. Uh, perhaps uh, let's start with uh, uh, Madam Novak. You, you voted a, a no. Do you, do you think yes, there has I, a lot to be done? Yes, I think there is a lot to be done because, uh, well, as you know, Europe, uh, European market is a market of two different kinds of countries. Historically, I come from the, let's say, second uh, the wave of countries which joined the European Union and of course we are from one point of view in a worse position because we have a big leap, leap to go. On the other hand we are in a better position because we are I would say less developed there, therefore we are more hungry for a success if you can call it this way we are more competitive so I think from one point of view Europe can learn from us from other point of view uh, for instance there are differences in different certifications registrations which should be the same in European Union but they are still not yeah. and this is what common market should really develop 
So there's uh, plenty to be done. Let's be uh, bring in uh, Mr. Petrov here. Um, of course, uh, from your outside point of view, a little bit SMEs uh, is is uh, the backbone of Polish uh, of the Polish industry. In Russia, you have a little bit of a different picture. You wanted to uh, concentrate on SMEs. There were programs also helped partly by Western banks and institutions. At the moment, it doesn't look that uh, that good as it did before. Well, uh, first of all, a very important fact that more than 60% of our members at our chamber are representative of this sector, SMEs. So they do exist in Russia? And uh, they, they do exist they in Russia. Uh, the only problem is that if you take GDP of my country, uh, the mm. share of SMEs is less than 20%, mm. which is certainly very low in any EU, well, first wave, as my Polish colleague put it, uh, country, it's up to 60-70%, which is absolutely necessary figure for stable and sustainable development of any economy. Well, I can tell you for uh, our chamber, SME sectors is an absolute priority. And uh, a few years ago, we launched together with Eurochamber a very interesting project which uh, specially was devoted for internalization. Of, uh, fantastic well, word there, yes. It's a fantastic Thank word <laughs> uh, of uh, small and medium-sized enterprises. And I can tell you that uh, all uh, EU uh, regional chambers were very interested to meet their colleagues from my country. They were absolutely open. And you see, uh, the main goal of this project was to teach the teachers. So our regional chambers, they should know how to support small and medium-sized uh, company. Uh, another problem, uh, you see, uh, this is that uh, small and medium companies in my country are mainly engaged in services, in trade, and not in industrial production. But you see, we absolutely need innovation technology, and uh, innovation is actually the strongest part of SMEs. Well, you had this uh, project of um, a sort of kind of uh, Russian Silicon Valley just outside uh, outside Moscow. Yes. How's that, how's that going? Uh, well, you know, it's uh, not only Skolko nearby yeah. Moscow, which, uh, well, uh, uh, the founders, they call it uh, Russian Silicon Valley. But uh, you see Silicon, it depends how, how you should spell it. <laughs> it's a b very big difference. Uh, but w we have uh, many other uh, science and technology centers around the country. For example, Novosibirsk, mm. Dubna, and so on, in uh, such fields like uh, nuclear, peace energy, uh, IT, uh, ICT, uh, mm. petrochemical industry, and so on, so forth. So we should not concentrate on one center where uh, one should admit that the biggest state support is for Skolkovo today. Yeah. You mentioned Eurochambers. What is Eurochambers doing at the moment uh, in terms of cooperation with Russia? Is it um, is it a bit frozen as well? Is it is it impacted by the political situation at the moment, or uh, are the contacts uh, still thriving? My personal opinion: it uh, sanctions lead not to the goal. Uh, does anyone really believe Mr. Putin is impressed by these sanctions? But we are losing confidence by the partners. Um, and uh, uh, that's much more damaging than the sanctions itself. How does it translate into, into business contacts? Are the business contacts itself suffering? Or are you still uh, saying that yes, there's... Uh, they say, how are, are you reliable in the future? Can we make a common project? Yeah. Who gives us the guarantee that tomorrow will not come another sanctions yeah. and hinder us to realize this project? Yeah. And therefore, our answer is economy should not be a weapon against each other. Economy should uh, be a bridge. Uh, a free trade zone from uh, Lisbon to Vladivostok. That is an idea by would, your president. Would, yeah. would solve some problems. Yeah. And economy 
in most cases go before politics yeah. and therefore we could go before and that would be a creative idea mm. and not a stupid one. Yeah. Yes. Well to some people it sounds a little bit far-fetched, a little bit utopian, but you disagree? You think no, it's... No, no, uh... no. I, I agree because I think that uh, what the European Union can do and I can give an example from my field where I work in medical device uh, industry and for instance what uh, in European Union we have the certificates which of course are common for European Union and this is okay because this makes uh, the trade within the European Union much easier but every other country uh, for instance Russia has their own certificate uh, registration of medical devices European Union could help a lot producers like us if uh, for instance there were bilateral uh, agreements with certification and I'm sure that the medical industry is not the only one which has this problem yep. because yeah. and this would uh, really and ease enable the uh, trade and this free trade growing economy can help us at all, a lot and I'm sure it can. Yeah. Well, we had the, the, the program for modernization and, uh, uh, between the EU and, and Russia, and it was um, uh, renewed uh, uh, under the new, then new President Putin in 2012. But uh, it's not going anywhere at the moment, is it? Well, certainly it? our relations with the EU now, uh, unfortunately, they need some progress. And I absolutely share the opinion of my colleagues that economic sanctions is not the right way to go on many reasons. Just a few days ago, our Minister for Foreign Affairs met with the uh, European Association of Business in Russia. Uh, and he uh, mentioned about financial losses. This year, European business will lose up to 40 billion euros. And next year, if sanctions will be still imposed on uh, my country, even more, 50 or 60, we do not calculate our own losses, but certainly they exist, maybe not directly, but indirectly. Unfortunately, we have this year high inflation, then uh, actually it was fixed in our state budget. We have... Uh, uh, very uh, big fluctuation of exchange rate of Russian ruble mm. towards euro and American dollars. And it doesn't help, you see, business and economic cooperation. Still, uh, you see, I am very much optimistic. EU is our biggest trade partner. Uh, last year, total turnover in bilateral trade was more than 400 billion uh, mm. American dollars. Mm. So, sorry, we use yeah. dollars in our That's custom right. statistics. Easy enough uh, to but, convert. Uh, uh, you <laughs> see, it's also <laughs> appreciation of dollar <laughs> according to the euro, so it's a little bit difficult to calculate just now, sitting at this table, how much in euros. And uh, you see, if you compare with the biggest, our single trading partner, China, so the total trade with China is four times less than our trade when with the EU. Let's talk a bit uh, about China a little bit at the moment. It's very topical, of course. You have the, uh, the, the, the summit uh, at the moment going on, ASEM. Of course, there's more big politics and more political leaders. But oh, we had the Chinese also here. Yeah, yeah the, the Chinese, global platform. The Chinese CCPID, the Chinese Foreign Trade Organization, yeah. as a chamber, was here. And also the American uh, president of the chamber uh, so sitting. the chambers of commerce have, 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 have uh, uh, concluded very good relations. All. The, the Russian vice president, the American vice president, the Iranian president, the Chinese uh, yeah. vice president, they all were sitting here and talking together. But and, there's still problems, and aren't thinking they? in the same in the similar way. In the similar way. So so really, it's only the problem of politicians. I mean, we, we have now uh, we, uh, we there was a hope to, that the free trade agreement with the EU and Vietnam would have would have been concluded, but that is, has been postponed again. Also, there's Perhaps a little worry, isn't there, that, that China is picking out uh, the, the countries, you know, they have a deal with Russia and then they, they have a deal with, with France, maybe with Germany, but they, they, they don't want to deal with the EU. But so they should deal with the European Union. Yes. They divide and rule yes. a bit. So, so, so do you think there's a, there's a certain attitude problem? By, uh, yes. You see, well. I am slightly disagree. It's not only the problem of politicians. It's also the problem of mass media. Certainly, yeah. I don't mean <laughs> mean. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Mass media, Mass media. Are mirror of the reality. 
Yes. Well, and, uh, but, but, but you know, we have different mirrors. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> So, yeah. Masmi, in, in uh, what kind did you think that they manipulate uh, opinion or, uh, or amongst the business community? Well, I would not put it in this way that they manipulate, but you see today world, when communication is so quick, we have internet, you see uh, we have coverage of any event just on the spot, though it's uh, positive or negative, and unfortunately sometimes you see the political decision are taken from the screen on TV and without, you see, brain attack, without uh, deep analysis of the whole situation. And, and with the so responsibility not input by the business community, would you say? Or? No, but the business community, well, actually, this is what I usually say, that it would be best if uh, the politicians made their politics somewhere up there and did not mingle with the business. No, no, <laughs> then no, 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 we, no, then no, we would be better uh, off. But, of but course, politicians I know it's could yeah. make it the same way as we do. Yes. We sit together, we talk together. Uh, yesterday we had an evening together with a glass of wine. Uh, imagine if Mr. Putin and Mr. Obama sitting two days together, like Mr. Kohl and Mr. Gorbachev did, Mm. Um, and perhaps going fishing and drinking a glass of wine and uh, then how to deal with IS, for example, yeah. how to make a global security system. Oh, that would cause results. Dialogue. Not dialogue. dialogue. It's Only crucial. dialogue. Economy is dialogue yeah. and politics should be dialogue too. Well, that's a wonderful uh, last sentence, perhaps for today's debate. We've run out of time, just in time for that beautiful sentence. Uh, thank you very much for watching and see you next time.